So, as you can see in there, that is where the cam follower is. So, if we give a little bit of encouragement to that, there you go. So, good afternoon YouTube. You catch me today doing the high pressure fuel pump on my S3. Uh, so I've set the camera up and I'm going to slowly take you through it just to give you an idea of uh, pretty much how easy a job it is. It's not anything big, um, but this is the sort of job that uh, probably needs doing every, well less than a couple of years depending on how much you use the car, probably 20,000 miles is good. Um, what happens is a cam follower, which you'll see in a minute, and that cam follower, cam follower, Oh, still got my cold, <laughs> not good, uh, runs on the cam lobe and basically what happens it's um, it runs on the centrifuge there and basically pumps this okay. at quite high pressure into your fuel system so the cam lobe will wear out and the cam will also wear out if you let the cam lobe go too far um, so we're just going to um, drop a new one in there now I believe from the the previous person who owned this car it was done around about just over a year ago so I don't expect it to be too bad but for the sake of 30 quid it's certainly worth doing so first of all we want to take some of the pipe work out of the way so the PCV valve pipe comes off and you won't see this on camera but ooh, these clips are always a challenge there you go so basically, that pipe comes off your PCB, okay, put that to one side, you don't need that at the moment. You now have, um, and let me just turn you around a little bit, make it easier, you have an electrical switch there to regulate the pressure, that comes off, and another one on top, again, just pops simply off. So there you go, wiring's out of the way, and what we're going to do now is take the cap off the shoulder valve okay put that somewhere safe you don't want to lose it and I'm going to release the pressure that's built up in there so before I do that I'm going to stick my trusty surgical gloves on because petrol in your hands stinks I'm a petrol head I love the smell of petrol but I don't want it on my hands later so there's going to be some petrol comes out of this just a stick of cloth there just to catch whatever comes out and basically just put the probe inside the shader valve there and there's a little peg give it a press and when you get it just right there you go the pressure is released it's just a little square the petrol comes out but if you don't do that first of all that's going to go straight in your eye when you take that out so if you've released the pressure you want to get a 13 millimeter on the shredder valve itself give it a crack and again, there's going to be some residual fuel coming out of this. And again, just take the valve completely out of the way. And again, put that in a nice safe place too. So, and again, we have the valve out. Okay, next thing to do now is you want to get a 17 mil spanner and I'm not sure if you can see that there is a union just down there let me just move that pipe out of the way you might see it a little bit better okay, there's a union just down there that you can actually see my spanner on at the moment just there and we'll give that a crack let me just bring you further in so there you go that's where the union is there, and we just crack that off. Again, there might be a small amount of fuel comes out of that. Let's just get you a little bit better in there. Not easy to film this and do it at the same time, but you get the idea. Okay, there you go, and a little bit of fuel does come out of there, and basically, there you go, the pipe is off. Okay, let's stick you back up here again. So, what you want to do now is get your T4, T30 
Torx and crack off the bolts. So basically you've got three bolts, one like so, and another one there, and the last one tucked right in there and that's why you need to take your valve out because you will not get it without valve in. So, simple as that. There shouldn't be much pressure behind them. And then from there, drop your bolts out. Simple as that. So, all that's left to do now, to get it out anyway, is give it a little uh, tug. Now wiggle it about and tug it gently because there is an O-ring in there and what you don't want to do, unless you've got a new one to fit in its place, is damage the O-ring. So just gently wiggle it and there you go. The pump comes out. Okay. And again, a little bit of residual fuel there, nothing to worry about. So, as you can see in there, that is where the cam follower is. So, if we give a little bit of encouragement to that, there you go. One cam follower, that's all it is. And looking at this one, well, to be honest, there's nothing on there. So, that is in very good condition. Okay, but uh, as I say, for the sake of 30 quid, I'm going to change it anyway. Now just looking at the cam, the cam is actually inside there, just going to feel for any obvious burrs on the cam, visually look for any damage and to me, to be honest, that looks very good. Okay, I can't see any burring, I can't see any any problems with that at all, so to me the cam looks good. There you go, just to get the camera in there, okay, that looks good. So, all we're going to do now, is just sort of put you back over here again. I can leave that to the side just for a minute. I'm going to get my new cam follower out. And again, don't skimp on these things. You can get them for you know, quite, uh, well, quite less than £30. But to be honest, you want to get yourself a good heavy duty one. You don't want to be skimping on these. And that, that there is the brand new one. Now to me, I'll be honest, looks like the old one. So I would say that the guy who fitted this last time also didn't skimp, which is good. But um, you can see there's no markings in there at all, and there's no wear on there at all. So uh, I'm going to get myself a little bit of the residual oil that is just sitting around there, and just lubricate that up, because you don't want to be starting your engine up, especially components like this, without any oil on them. So a little bit of oil on there, pop that back in there, like so. Okay, and then all we're going to do is what we did to take the high pressure pump out, we're going to put it back on again. And just make sure visually that the seal's okay, and yeah, that looks okay. And just going to have a quick inspection to make sure there's nothing that it looks nasty on there. Ah, that goes back in there and again when you're installing it be very very careful not to nick that that o-ring just nice and gently wiggle it from side to side and it's in there okay the spring is pushing it out so what I'm going to do now is going to get myself a little bit of a Loctite just to put on there nothing major but I don't want those coming out those bolts so I'm just going to put a little slip of Loctite on there because it's going metal to metal, so let's get the Loctite. Okay. Now, for anybody who's never used Loctite before, there is one golden rule. Less is more. You only want the tiniest of bits. So, there you go. Let's get this into camera. I'm try and get it focused. A tiny little bit on like that. That's all it needs. It doesn't need a massive amount. I'm just going to run that into the first part of the thread. I'm going to slowly 
work with that bolt back into where it belongs. So again, keep wobbling it, keep moving it around. Don't go mad, you don't need to crack it right up as hard as it will go at the moment. Do all your bolts nice and gently, nice and slowly. Again, tiny little slivers on there. You don't need much with Loctite. It will spread and it will be, it will bond a lot uh, better than you think. It doesn't need to be covered. Just working that one in there like that. And the last one, again, tiny little bit. Tiniest of bits. And that one goes under there. Well, the valve's going to go back in again in a minute. Now, the official torque spec on these is about, I think, 7 newton meters or something like that. Now, I've worked on production lines for years, and I've worked on cars for years, and you get a bit of a second knowledge and a bit of a second sense of this. Do not go mad. That's my best advice. Do not go mad, because you're putting a steel bolt into alloy, and you just want it, literally, to hold it. Okay. It's going to go around nice and gently, get them all about the same, okay. and again the Loctite's going to hold it so you don't need to go too crazy. Okay, so that feels good to me. Again, if you're doing this by rule of hand, which I am, you just need the littlest of pressure. You will feel when it's solid. And anybody's been doing this for years or doing DIY for years or working on assembly for years will know the feel of it okay so that's back on there again so it's as easy as that we've put the new cam filler in um, the old one we'll put in the box to dispose of um, nothing wrong with that one at all but like I say 30 quid well spent so what I'm going to do now is put all the cables back on again so I'll do a little clean up and uh, start it up. So, here we go. PCB valve connected back up again. Pressure switch connected. And the regulator connected. And that is that. Okay. Last job, which you can't see on the camera is to connect back up the union on the bottom which is always a pain because it's very springy and it's a coarse thread so once you get it in place a couple of turns with your finger it should nip on there okay just doing it by hand as much as I can and again no need to go crazy with this union okay it is a locking fit Okay, like a mushroom fit, so it is there to be nipped up, not to be rammed up. Again, 17 mil for that one. Not the easiest place to get into. Okay. And then the valve goes back on again. So I'm just going to knit those up, that is about it. hope it's been helpful to somebody and if you're doing it yourself, as you can see, it's not too difficult. Cheers all. Okay, all tools tidied up and all the bolts tested and made sure they're up to uh, my torque. So, let's prime the system. Make sure we've got no leaks. And go with the key. Let's turn it on. Have a look around. Oh, looking good. And of course, ooh, turn the music off. So YouTube will get me. Make sure I'm neutral and first start. Oh, 
as with all TFSI engines. They've got that lovely distinctive rattle to them anyway. But, for me, it's any leaks. It all looks good. There you go. Just your half hour job. Enjoy.